This is the outline. of the course. Here's the Okay. Okay, so this is the other of the course. So we will try today to introduce a bit, motivate historically the subject, why information is important in thermodynamics. And, so on. and probably many of you, or I don't know if somebody in the school already mentioned that the, the, the origin of this problem is the, the Maxwell demon, which is, which is, at the, is something that was uh, it's a, it's a puzzle or a problem that uh, uh, came out by Maxwell at, this, at the same time as thermodynamics started, more or less, and statistical mechanics started. So the problem of information has been relating with thermodynamics uh, or, uh, or since the very beginning of thermodynamics. So this is the, the idea today is to give a little bit of history and then the basic concepts in, thermodyn in information theory because we need, we need to, this will be very qualitative, but, um, but the idea of the course is that you give you at least the basic tools to work with information and thermodynamics and, and to relate both. So uh, this is more quantitative. So we will give today, this morning, some basic concepts of information theory as some basic concepts of our work. And then how the two are related, okay? And there is an exercise, two exercises, very easy exercises that uh, Bella uh, already distributed among you. And the idea is that this afternoon, because it is three hour session, so we, I cannot talk well, I can, but you cannot listen me for three, three hours. We will try to do a, a, a next class of exercises. I mean, to, to solve the exercises here. Okay, so let's start with the with this history. As I said, the problem of information and thermodynamics is is is, the, is, is a parallel to the problem, or it's it's, it's uh, illustrated by the Maxwell demon. This is a book that uh, is a compilation of the main papers on the Maxwell demon. It's a very uh, there is a second edition, much more. Uh, more papers and, um, and it's the story of the Maxwell demon. So we will start by, by I guess, I don't know if in, in undergraduate courses people have told you about the Maxwell demon, but I will tell you uh, the, the main idea. And then uh, uh, Maxwell demon is a bit complicated. Uh, so there is something called the Sealer engine introduced by Sealer in 1912. And uh, most people work uh, in, in the field of, of quantum of, of the Miami information work with the CLR. And actually the exercise that you have to do this afternoon, this is a version of the CLR engine. And, uh, and then we will, uh, we will see, this is a story that comes from, Maxwell Demon was introduced in 1865. I and the CRN in 1912. And then there was a lot of uh, people working on that, but uh, when the, there was a real revolution on this topic was in the 70s, 1970s, where with Landauer and, and Bennett. And they found a completely new way of, uh, of looking at the problem of the Maxwell demon. And on top of that, they created this idea of the term of the physical consequences of information. So if information has physical consequences. Okay, so this is the story. And uh, here is uh, some uh, experiments that are, these experiments, we were able to do experiments on um, Maxwell Demon in the last decade or so. So um, we will have next week, John Schoffer, who is one of the third who has done experiments on the Maxwell demon, and he will explain that. So uh, this is the, this is 1877, 18, 1865, 
Uh, and uh, this is the first time the idea of the Maxwell demon appears is in a letter to a friend. The friend was writing a book on thermodynamics and asked Maxwell uh, for his opinion. And, and he, like the big genius uh, in physics, he just in a letter, in a paragraph, he presents the idea. Uh, and he says, he starts to say to pick a hole. Actually, the Tate asked her, asked him to, to see if, if the book is, is correct in the sense that if, if the book attributes to the fathers of thermodynamics correctly, you know, that nobody gets angry <laughs> with the book. So, but, uh, and, and Maxwell says, well, I cannot tell you too much about that, but I can pick holes. You know, in English, pick holes means like to find some small uh, controversy or a small, uh, and, and this is a hole, uh, to pick a hole in the second law of thermodynamics. We think that the second law of thermodynamics is one of the most important laws in physics. And, and he was in this paragraph um, putting into question, into question the validity or, or, or the nature of the second law. And well, the idea is very simple. You have two gases separated by a wall. One is hot and the other is cold. And you know from a statistical mechanics that hot means that the particles are in average and the hot ones are mm, faster than the cold ones. Um, but Maxwell, in, in, like this year, or maybe one year after, one year before, he discovered the Maxwell distribution of velocities. So you know that in a gas, uh, the, the average is true, is is high, is average is higher, average velocity is higher in the hot than in the cold, but there is a distribution. So in the hot gas, there are many slow particles. And in the cold gas, there are many fast particles. So Maxwell immediately saw this and, and, and thought, uh, if there is somebody that can manipulate a small hole, a small wall, a small, a small door, separating the two gases. And when the, this is the demon, when the demon sees a, a slow particle in the hot gas, trying to cross, he opens the door. And when he sees a fast particle in the cold gas, or a slow particle in the hot gas, so he allows these particles to cross. So in this way, the demon will be uh, transferring energy from cold to hot, like an air condition, or like a heat pump. So he, he, he will be, doing this. And Maxwell thought, well, maybe he can do all these operations without any cost. So this means that we will have free air conditioning or free heating. Free heating. Yeah? So all, all our energy problems will be, will be solved. So um, the idea is that can we, by, observe, by measuring, by observing, and by acting according to this observation, can we beat the second law? Of course, the second law Second law, one of the of the statements of the second law is that we cannot we cannot uh, transfer energy from cold to hot. We cannot pump energy without expending expending energy, without doing work. Uh, and this is in contradiction with the second law. So Maxwell Demon was beating the second law somehow by using information. Here is the. the, the so you can interrupt me, and there are people online that. So it's good that you have a clear idea of all the concepts that I'm going to tell you. So if you if, is this clear, the Maxwell demon, many people probably have heard about. It. And, and and look at the the the. Think of the role of information. So it is important that the the demon measures. Measure, what is measuring? Measuring is acquiring some information from the system and then acts according to this measurement. So it opens or closes the door. Okay, this is um, Maxwell. So many people have studied this, like Leo Brigio Wien. So people thought that there is a cost of uh, in the Maxwell, in the demon operation. For instance, a cost of measuring because if you want to measure the, the position or the velocity of a particle, you have to send a photon and so on. 
Some people think that this is the cost of operating the, the door. But one can prove that this has, uh, of course, in a real situation, this will have some cost, has some cost. But this cost is not bound. Uh, I mean, you cannot, you can do it as small as you like. Okay. There are other barriers. For instance, you can think of the of the of this uh, door as automatic, and this has is related with Feynman ratchet. I think uh, Edgar mentioned Feynman ratchet. So this is also related with Feynman's ratchet and ratchets in general. Which is why, in, also in biology, is uh, people. Interest in this. Ah, here is uh, sorry. Here is, for instance, uh, yeah. Here is one case where this is even easier. This is the the, the original Maxwell demo where you pump heat from cold to hot, and the information that you get is the position and the speed of the velocity of the particles. Mm. This is even much simpler. This is just two gases, and and the demo opens. When, when a particle tries to cross from left to right. So he can accumulate particles on the right, on the right, on the right. And now you can use this gradient of density, which is the gradient of pressure, if these are gases, to create, to, to extract work from the system. And here you only need a position. And here you can think, ah, this, this work could be done by a bulb. By something with a spring, something like that, and this is a this is what a Feynman proved that it is impossible the in the Feynman ratchet. Okay, so but the the story in 1912, uh, Cilar, Leo Cilar, uh, uh introduced a, a new version of the Maxwell demon, which is the one that people has used all the time, okay? and uh, and you will see why the Cilar engine. This is uh, are thousands of papers on the CDR engine. And as I said, 90% of the of information tries to solve this problem. CDR. The CDR engine is the following. You have a, a gas, well, a gas. A gas is a, it's a single molecule. It's called a single molecule gas. So you, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a particle in the box at temperature T. What means temperature T here? Well, that in every collision, uh, the gas thermalize, the, the particle thermalizes. So you have uh, you have a random exchange of energy between the particle and the, and the surrounded by, but this is zero in, in, in average, the particle doesn't, there is no a, a net flow of energy from the particle to the environment. So uh, you do the following. There is an external agent, some demon, if you like, that introduces a piston in the middle of the gas. Then the demon uh, measures, the demon measures where the particle is. It's, it's a binary measurement, so it's left or right. And if it is in the, on the left, as here, uh, he, uh, ex he performs a, a, an a adiabatic expansion a reversible expansion of the gas. You know that the gas can do, the expansion of a gas can be uh, free, which is irreversible because there's nothing increasing in the universe. But if you, if you exert a pressure, then the gas is doing some work. And if you remember some dynamics, this is an adiabatic expansion. And in this adiabatic expansion, it's reversible. So you exert the same pressure, you change the sign of the pressure, and then you do the, the you completely reversible. So this is a, 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 a reversible expansion. And then you remove the piston. Sorry that it is not be here. You remove the piston. Or I can do, maybe I can do this more. Ah, everybody. So, uh, and then you remove the piston and you go back to the, to the, or the original. This is a cycle, you see? There is a cycle, and actually it's a system which is in contact with a thermal bath because the, the, the walls are at temperature T, and, and there is a, uh, it is doing some work when you move the piston. So it's like, this is the, the, the schematic diagram. Uh, as, as always,
always say in stochastic thermodynamics, we will have this com convention of signs. So heat is positive when everything is positive when it goes through the system. Okay. But here, at here we will we will now here we will uh, calculate the extracted work. So how much work do we extract when we do this? Well, we can use uh, the formula for the work in thermodynamics. Since this is a single particle, we can use the ideal gas uh, equation that pressure is kt divided by volume. And then you, we get this formula. And here, what we have is an expansion uh, from an initial volume one half to a total volume. This is the total volume of the box, which is one. Well, one is uh, volume divided by volume divided by two. So this is kt log. So in this expansion, we get a work kt log two, and where this energy comes from? It comes from the, the walls. The specific mechanism is that when I move the piston, the, the, the particle, the collisions with the, with, with the moving piston, when you have a particle that collides with some, a wall that is moving, it loses some energy, eh? because the, the, the collision is not, the, the velocity, it's not the same after the collision and before the collision. It loses some energy. And this energy is recovered when, when, when it uh, collides with the, with the wall. So there is a flow of energy from the bath, you know, from the bath to the external cage. So we are extracting energy from a single thermal bath. This is called a, a perpetuum mobile of the second kind. Yeah? A perpetuum mobile of the first kind is the machine that creates energy and the first law, well, the first law, the fact that the energy is constant uh, prevents this to occur. The, um, the perpetuum mobile of the second kind is a machine that can extract energy from a single bath. And this would also be uh, the solution for our problems of energy because you take a ton, a ton of water from this, from the, from the, from the sea, and it has a lot of energy. I mean, a ton of water, even at a 10 Celsius, it has a lot of energy. So if you could extract this energy, it would be able to go away from the problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is that? Uh, Question or what is that? It's the description. Ah. Okay, so uh, we will. This is the work that we extract. We will follow the the the. the we will have the fol the following convention of science. The work is positive when it goes to the system. So this means that the work is. Uh, is a question. Uh, uh, the problem is that it's not uh, here that it's not here. The last thing that uh, okay. So why negative sign in equation three? What is equation three? Why negative signs were? In the work. In the work zone on the system. Yeah, in the in the, in the formula that is not here. No. <laughs> well, because ex, extracting the convention in the sign is that a work is positive when it goes when energy flows to the system. But extracted work, when we say extracted work, is minus this because we when we extract work is that we extract work from the system. So uh, this is. This is this equation. Um, I don't know if I can see. Well, anyway. Uh,
Okay, now uh, this <laughs> you were asking for this time. So uh, when we say extracted, this is extracted work, and this is work done on the system. So this is the one is negative, one is minus the other. Uh, I use this because I think it's more intuitive for people to calculate the extracted work. And you see that you start working an expansion, that it is um, that the convention is the opposite, is the minus sign. So, uh, by the way, uh, the, the exercise, the first exercise, maybe some people can, can be done with, with this information. Okay. It can be done with this information. The, uh, so we will generalize this and we will study this. <coughs> and um, um, one of the possible uh, modifications is that you can assume that the, the, the demon, the demon has to measure here. Here the measurement is necessary. Why? Because you have to, to, to make this, this expansion reversible, you have to put, you have to exert the force against the expansion. So if you exert the force in the opposite way, in the opposite side, then you do the opposite. You, you, do, you compress the gas instead of, expand, of, of making an expansion. So if you don't measure, you have, you, you cannot extract work. So now one can ask, what happens if you measure, but your measurement is not precise and you have some error in the measurement? So if you have some error in the measurement, then you have, you cannot, first you cannot do this expansion because what happens if you have an error? That the, maybe the particle is here. So you cannot, you cannot expand all the way. So you have to expand up to some alpha, uh, some place here. And then you have a possibility. Sometimes you compress the gas, sometimes you expand the gas. So you have to work this. It's very it's a, a, a easy exercise. And you and there is an optimal protocol that extracts the, the, the optimal amount of energy. So uh, you will have to do this exercise. We will do this exercise today, this afternoon. Questions? No questions. Okay, may I? Yeah. So uh, this uh, alpha, you said uh, you can expand it up to a certain alpha. What is this uh, alpha? How does it relate to? You have to solve the exercise. Ah, okay. okay, yes, okay, I will do it. Well, I will mark yeah, okay. you, I will mark you. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a good question. I mean, is this a criticism? So this, this setup has a lot of criticisms and uh, questions. Um, one is this one, if you need some work to uh, insert, the piston, no? This is your question. Yeah, to to insert it with zero with zero cost, yeah. you need to do it fast and uh, and with uh, and the probability to find the particle is almost zero. And it's true that uh, there are some some you can prove that you can do it with zero cost in the insertion. Uh, but this is interesting because in quantum mechanics, you can, if the system is quantum, inserting the piston at least at zero temperature or low temperature, it costs you something because you have to localize the particle and you know the uncertainty principle tells you that if you, if you reduce the uncertainty in precision, you increase the kinetic energy. So, uh, so uh, because of the uncertainty principle, when you uh, do this operation, it costs you something. But the, 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 Overall um, balance of energy is the same. But this is a good question. Okay. Um, uh, you say that with the error in the measurement, you have to sometimes expand and sometimes compress? Yeah, because suppose that error means that, uh, that the particle is here, but you believe that it is here. So your protocol is that I, I believe that it is here, so I expand in this direction, and, and but no, the particle is here, so I'm compressing. You will see it takes, so that's it. It's a question that you don't know. With some um, very, maybe very small probability, you, you, mis, you mistake. The, the, you, you, so you, you are pushing, you believe that you are expanding, but no, you are, you are uh, 
present. Some kids in says, no, but in the very first moment when you are pushing, you notice that you are compressing. So the pushing is, is itself a measurement. Okay, there are many criticisms and many weak points in the in the CLR engine. And actually, um, so people don't like it very much. Uh, but I can tell you, and this is a, this is just for the skeptical people, that um, the CLR engine can be can be implemented in many systems. Uh, for instance. You can take a Brownian particle in a potential. You do this, this operation. You, you uh, raise a barrier. You measure where the particle is and lower the well where the particle is. Then you uh, remove the barrier and go back here. And if you do this and you do the calculation of the work, the work, you extract a kilo. You extract. So the only the only important ingredient in the CLR engine, besides these uh, details of the barrier and so on, is look. You create the symmetry breaking. You create, you force the system to move either to left or to right. <laughs> you measure what is the decision that the system has taken, and then you you go back to the origin by uh, using this information. And with these two ingredients, a symmetry breaking that forces the system to adopt one of the two possibilities. Measurement, well, and a, a, a smart protocol that uses this information to go back to the original state, you can extract k kilo. And this is the amazing thing of thermodynamic information, that there are universal uh, results like this one. Like if you have a symmetry breaking with one, one half, one half, you get it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can implement so this CLR engine, for example, with optimal reason. Yeah, yeah. This has been done. Well, I think the first ones who did it was Edgar. No, with, uh, second, third. Eh? There were others before us. No, the first CLR engine with reason. I think they were the Japanese group 2012 before us. No, but this was not a CLR. This was uh, ah, then it was uh, yeah. <laughs> genuine, <laughs> well, ours was not also very genuine because we didn't do the whole thing. We did it, we did half, and then we said, well, we, <laughs> <laughs> we use this two halves to say, but, 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 but the first one is, but John has done, I think John has done John. this experiment. Yeah, yeah. bigger room. So I know. He, he, he can actually tell this. And, uh, and something that it is also interesting, this is the paper. Uh, no paper in 2001 uh, that you can even do it with with macroscopic systems. You don't need mm, mm, this is a single molecule. This is a brown particle, which is micro in the sense that it has fluctuations. Uh, um, and you can do it even with a with a system which is macroscopic. If you take a, a, a CLR engine, sorry, CLR, uh, easy model. You know, it's a model from the statistical mechanics. It's a model of a of little magnets, no? And you can uh, you can do the uh, basic model has something called a symmetry breaking. So if you increase the if you decrease the temperature or you increase the coupling between spins, here we, we do everything isothermal. So we, we increase the coupling between the spin, you, you induce a symmetry breaking. But it's a macroscopic symmetry breaking. The magnetization of the whole system is a model of a magnet. So uh, you increase the coupling between spins and 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 the system acquires a, a, a non-zero spontaneous magnetization, which can be positive or negative. So there is a symmetry breaking. So you are, you are forcing the system to choose up, positive or negative. So if you do that, uh, you measure the, here it says measurement. <laughs> you, measure, you measure, how can I get rid of this? Let me say. How can I get rid of that? Uh, is that screen projected? So automatically, it pops up every time somebody sends a message. Ah. Uh, maybe, maybe just to. Okay, don't send messages now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, yes. 
Don't send polite messages. Just, just uh, to rephrase, to know which direction the piston needs to move. Uh, okay, yeah. So don't be polite. Online people. What is, uh, yeah, and now why it doesn't, ah, no. Hey, measurements here. Yeah. That is measurements. So you measure, and, and, <coughs> and, and depending on the measurement, you do, you go back to the original, uh, System, the original state, uh, using this this measurement. Actually, what you do is to avoid the critical point, and, and, and you need to measure the the, the, the manifestation, and and then you extract the of you extract the of the volume. And and this is very interesting because it tells you that the quantity that you have to measure doesn't need to be microscopic. It needs to be the result of a fluctuation, but can be macro. Meso or micro can be whatever the scale is not important. And the energy that, that you extract in the case of this model doesn't scale with the system size. No, it's always okay. case below. It scales with the number of with the symmetry vectors that you have in the system. And if there are only two, yeah, Raoul Toral gives you say, ah, this maximum human business is stupid <laughs> because you extract kt log two, you extract kt. And the fluctuations of energy in a, in a system are KT. But you extract that my 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 answer is uh, that no, you're, he's not right because why not? Because here you can repeat the cycle many times. So you can systematically extract K kilo two, K kilo two, and if you do it 10 to 20 times, you extract. At the end of the day, you, you extract uh, a, a, a macroscopic amount of energy. So this objection is maybe it's true for practical reasons. I mean, nobody wants to, nobody thinks that the CLR engine or the Maxwell demon will solve problems of and the, the, the energetic problems of society. But it's true that conceptually you can extract, you can beat the second law in a systematic way. So you can do the same just during the, the temperature? Well, uh, temperature is more. All, uh, most of the thermodynamic of information is with isothermal process. Mm -hmm. For historical reasons, also because it's simpler and so on. You can also, uh, and look, we're talking of all the time, we extract KT log two, so there is a temperature. KT is ah, yes. K temperature. Mm -hmm. So we fix the temperature. Okay, so this is the this is the Silar engine, 1912, and uh, everybody. Ah, what, why why this is much easier to uh, why people prefer this, even though we have all these problems with the piston and the, uh, which are actually not real problems because you can implement the Silar engine with everything. Why people prefer the Silar engine rather than the original Maxwell demon? Well, because it's here, the, the measurement is very, very clean. You measure just in a single uh, instant of time. You, you, need, you, you measure in one of the stages of the, of the process. The Maxwell demo has to measure all the time, where is the particle, where is the particle, <laughs> and open and close. So the, the quantity that you measure is, is very easy, it's a binary measurement. It's, Zero, one, left, right, uh, yes, no, it's a, it's a binary measurement. And the Maxwell demon now has to measure the velocity, the position, the, uh, in, in one side, in the other side, and so on. So it's much, and the operation is also much more clear. The Maxwell demon has to open and close, and, uh, and here is a, in a single cycle, you have a single measurement and a single operation. That's it. So it's much cleaner. And then people can do theory with this much easier. Okay, so in the 1970s, in the 1970s, there were a, a, a completely kind of revolution in this problem. And the reason is the two, two people, uh, Rolf Landauer and Charles Bennett. Rolf Landauer was at, the both were at IBM. Bennett, Landauer was a big guy in, in electronics and, uh, and Landauer, at that time, maybe it was a photo or something, but then he became one of the 
of the leaders of quantum information. If there is an overpricing in quantum information, I think Charles Bennett would be one uh, of the So, um, so Landauer and Bennett were in the same corridor in IBM. So they, they, uh, Landauer first uh, introduced what it is called Landauer's principle. Probably the author also will talk about this because he has that experiment on the on Landauer. And then, um, and Landauer's principles means, well, there are some confusion, eh? But, uh, maybe you have to hear about it. Is that uh, some Operations with information uh, require some energy or some, they have some limit. Thermodynamics imposes some limitations to logical operations or to information processes. And, and he illustrated this with a case, which is the simplest case. People uh, say uh, with a process, the process is the following. You have, you have a, 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 a so you need here a bit, a classical bit. So you have it in, in your hard drive and so on. You have uh, uh, each each uh, node that you have a hard drive which stores the bits. No, it stores zeros uh, or ones. So, so you have a physical system. You want to, to to have a memory. It doesn't matter if it is a memory which is a which is a, a magnetic or in the brain or biological or whatever, the minimal uh, what you need to store energy is that you have a system that adopts two states. One state we call it zero and the other state is one. These are mesostates or macroscopic states. Mm -hmm. huh? Ah, my, my computer. Okay, so you have a system. You have a system, and, and, and for the system to store information, you need two states. This is something that we are going to discuss all the time. No? Uh, well, in, in modern computers, some of these states are dynamical. For instance, in, in I think in in SD cards, they are, no, in SD cards they are not dynamical. If they are dynamical, you need energy, you need a battery. So they they must be like that. In in the CPU, it's dynamical. So zero is a current in one direction, and and one is in another direction. Or zero is current, zero is no current, one is current. Something like that. But in the hard drives and in the passive memories, you need that the system that adopts for each bit adopts two states, zero and one. Okay. So Alandauer consider the following processes. You have your memory, your, your memory can be in any of the two states, and, and you do, he call it the erasure, and many people call it erasure. I have a crusade to call it overwriting because it's really overwriting. You, you have something that can be in zero one, and you manipulate this memory to force it to be at zero. So it doesn't matter the, the, the starting the initial condition, you go to zero. This is called restore to zero. And I think it's, it's more, some people call it erasure, but you can erase in many ways. You can erase like, like heating up. If it is the magnet, you can heat up and cool down. And then uh, when you heat up, Goes to zero magnetization when you pull down it goes to zero one at random. So this is this is more overwriting that you want something which is a noun and you can overwrite a, a given bit. Okay, so Landauer thought that if this is uh, implemented in a physical system and 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 
each of these states occupy a volume in the phase space. The phase space is the, is the space of all the microstates. I don't know if you remember from the statistical mechanics that the entropy is the volume of microstates compatible with the macrostate. So here I have my system can explore all these microstates, the microstates compatible with zero and compatible with one. And now I'm forcing the system to uh, to adopt one of these, to only occupy this small volume. The volume in phase space. The volume. So if the, the volume shrinks by a factor two, no? Here I can occupy all this and. Um, So if the volume shrinks by a factor two, you remember the, the formula of entropy, which is in, in, in Boltzmann's grave, no, it's K log, the volume, log. If the volume uh, goes from in the in the process, well, volume just put it like that. Double U is in the most one grade, but here we do double U for the work. Uh, volume there like this. The entropy, the entropy is K log the volume, and here it is uh, K log the volume divided by. So is this is this is before. And this is after. So uh, uh, you can use the property of the of the of the logarithms and see that, that the entropy has decreased by the quantity k log. So Sorry. Yeah. Are we considering uh, are we considering a collection of bits or just one? Or That's just one. one. This is just one, but you can consider it. Okay. And then the system, so remember that the system was this one, no? No one, no. And then you go to see. So the system is you, you have it decrease the entropy of the of you have decreased the entropy of the of the system. So the entropy of the, of the universe cannot decrease. So you have to compensate this. How do you compensate? How do you create entropy in the universe by dissipating? So you dissipate heat, and you remember the, the increment of entropy in a but it's still divided by t. So if you want to, to have an, a, a, an increment of entropy k log 2, you need to dissipate k t log, uh, k t log. So by So by, if you want to implement this operation, this overwriting, you have to dissipate KT log two. And this is Landauer's principle. This is Landauer's principle. Okay, you have it here. In the, so you have to dissipate uh, K T log. Okay. There is some confusion because people think that the process is irreversible. No, the process is not irreversible. 
the process is reversible in the physical term. So the entropy of the universe doesn't change. Precisely what you do is to compensate the, the, compensate the, the, the decrease of entropy due to the shrinking of the phase space by creating entropy in the, in the, in the, in the yeah, the Landauer principle is the same if you consider a quantum mix. There is a lot of, of work on quantum Landauer. How do you do the question? Well, the problem, there are a lot of work, but the problem with Landauer needs a bar, needs a thermal bar. And, uh, and in quantum info, uh, you know that if you have a bath, you don't have quantum info anymore because. Uh, if you have a bath, the, the system layer like analyzes in the in the eigenbasis of the Hamiltonian, and then you, you have classical bits. So uh, temperature and quantum info, they are enemies, but there, of course, there can be uh, some compromise, and people has uh, uh, studied this type of thing. But essentially, here, here temperature is, is, is crucial because and that would tell you that the heat dissipated is 80 log P. So this T T is temperature. If temperature is zero, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Although for, well, for zero, te zero temperature is, is classical systems are very that's technical for technical reasons. If this is isolated, you cannot do this isolated system because this is the real theorem. The real theorem avoids this. The concept, the volume must be conserved. If you need to connect this to something, if you connect this to something at, temper at zero temperature, zero temperature is tricky because zero temperature means that, that you put a tiny amount of energy in the bath and the entropy increases by infinity. So, uh, with, uh, Okay, so uh, what's, what has to do this well? First, uh, notice that, um, that we have KT of two. This KT of two appears, uh, appear in the Maxwell Vigo and appears here. In the years before we had a nice series of, uh, of conferences which was called KT of two, because KT of two is like the essential thing of, uh, the essential quantity that uh, in quantum in the mass of information. So it's, it's a coincidence that there is a KT of two here, a KT of two in the Maxwell demon, okay, uh, in the Silar engine. So uh, this is what Bennett realizes. Bennett realizes that there is, a, there is a relationship between the two. And actually he came up with an idea for the Silar engine, which is very interesting. So uh, um, he proved, you remember the Silar engine, no? the Silar engine, here is a pot. You have the gas, and well, I, I can explain it with the. So uh, here you have to measure, no? So Bennett uh, and, and people didn't know where the energy. Uh, so you you extract you extract uh, work eighteen of two. So to restore the second law, uh, something in the the universe must compensate this. Because here you are extracting extracting energy from the thermal bath. So the energy of the universe is decreasing. No? So uh, Bennett realizes that people thought until the 70s that, that the measurement cost energy for the demo. And there was a kind of consensus, although nobody could prove it completely. So Bennett thought, well, maybe Landauer's principle has something to do here. Because the demon is a physical system, and if the demon is a physical system, the demon has the memory, and, and, and when, the me when the demon measures his, his memory, which can be zero, one, or left, in this case, left, right, his memory registers the state of the particle, and then to really go back to the to really go back to the original state, he has to erase this information. And by erasing this information, because of Landauer's principle, the demo has to dissipate KT of two. Or in other words, it has to spend a work KT of two. 
So this was idea, the Binance idea, Binance solution to the mass of demon. Okay. How, how do you restore the, the, in this cycle, the second law? You have to dissipate. Remember that this energy comes from the past. So you have to dissipate this back to the past. So uh, one answer is, well, by measuring. The measurement costs you. But uh, uh, Bennett realizes that you can actually, you can split the cost between measurement and eraser. So uh, the second law is restored because the demo has to forget what he has measured, which is kind of uh, shocking. But this was Bennett's idea. And this was a completely, a complete, um, complete uh, change of uh, viewpoint in the treatment of this. Uh, so the thermodynamic cost can be uh, due to eraser and can be due to both. Here I have an explanation of two examples. Depending on the nature of the memory of the demo, the cost can be in the in the eraser or in the measurement. But uh, I would not explain this in detail. This is it is it, it's all the time a question of computing how the volume of this, this changes in the memory of the demo. Okay, so um, to finish. Uh, just a few words on experimental realizations, but I think John will will give you this. This is our paper with Edgar and uh, other friends, uh, Iñaki Martinez, uh, Dimitri Petrov, who passed away. This was the, uh, an experiment done at ICFO in Barcelona with optical tweezers, and it was a particle. And the idea was to to take two two optical tweezers. You know what's an optical tweezer? something that traps particles. So you have two traps and you separate them. So the particle has to make a choice, either go left or right, like in the CLR. And, uh, and we managed to do this uh, by tuning the probability. So we could make the choice like one half, one half, or whatever, P1 minus P. And, um, and then, and then, uh, this is a plot of the potential in, in time, and this is a trajectory. So the, the particle here, these are the wells of the potential. Now here is a, the two the two traps are together, and here we separate the traps. And this is position, and this is time. Here we separate the traps, and here we put the traps together again. And um, and the particle has to make a choice, left, right, and we could. This is the Cilar engine essentially. Once you measure, you okay. This is another, uh, this is the, the Japanese people who is not really a sealer. This is more a Maxwell demo. This is a, this is a very simple Maxwell demo. If you have a, if you have a Brownian yeah. particle, you know that the Brownian particle uh, exhibits fluctuations, no? If it is in a gravitational field, it, it exhibits also fluctuation. The tendency is to go down, but by fluctuations from time to time, it can go up. So suppose that it can go up and then you put some, some uh, uh, obstacle here. And then you wait until another fluctuation and then, and then you put it again and then you put it again. And, you put it again. and so you are, you are uh, lifting the, the, the particle with zero energy because it doesn't cost any energy to put the particle. This is a ratchet actually. I have uh, a doubt with the experiment with the optical tweezers. Like, I don't see why do you, do you have to measure it there? I mean, you don't know. Here you have to measure because this is not the, this is not the CLR engine. Here, you, here we just do like that. For the CLR engine, you have to do the following. You have to do like that, then measure where it is, then lower this energy, and then go back like that. Yeah, so in this protocol, it doesn't matter. If no, in this protocol, is not the, the, this protocol was the one that we realized. As I said before, this is not the CLR engine. You have to uh, put together this part with another part which is different. So we made it by parts, but not the whole thing together. Okay, so it's not the whole. This is not the problem. Okay. 
So we never did it, but we, we put we put put together actually we did it in the paper, no? We put together the plot of an experiment and the plot of another experiment, and this was the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> we never did. But we were honest, no, we said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, because at that time we were interested not not the paper is has not still arranged in the title as a, we were interested in the energetics of the symmetry break. This is this part and the symmetry. This is a symmetry breaking, and this is a this is a like restoration of the symmetry. So we were interested in that. Okay, I think. Um, uh, okay, so uh, this is an overview of 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 the of of the history of the thermodynamic information before we came with a more uh, it's, it's very qualitative. You see, there are more there are some formulas like an hour, but uh, uh, in the last ten years or fifteen years, we uh, we use fluctuation theorems that I think somebody has. I mean, we we try to do a more uh, more uh, qualita quantitative and more systematic approach to this. I, I'm, many times I say that what we are doing in the last 10 years is just trying to understand Charles Bennett's papers because <laughs> Bennett was like very qualitative. And, uh, but essentially he, he said everything that, that he said. We, we are just generalizing this to cases like the exercise where you have an error and so on. And this is what we will, I will try to explain in the next, I will make a break now, and uh, we will try to solve, uh, we will we try to make all these uh, things more quantitative and more general, okay? And in, in order to do this, we, essentially, I like to, to, to split the thermodynamic of information into two parts. One is trying to, to the, the most important and conceptual one and the fundamental one is to, to see how, if we can restore the second law, can we restore the second law by considering the physical nature of the demo? This is what Bennett tried and so on. But before doing this, which is of course the, the, the final goal, uh, it's also interesting to see the Maxwell demon as, as to, to, to um, try to understand the Maxwell demon as an exchange between information and entropy. For instance, uh, we can just, uh, trying to reformulate the second law by incorporating information, trying to optimize Maxwell demons and so on. So these are the two tasks. Today we are going to work on this and tomorrow we will work on this. So, okay, so let's make a break of five minutes and then we can continue. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. See you in five minutes. Te puedo preguntar, te he visto a ti antes. En el Twitch, eh, ah, el premio bien. este de la charla. Ah, ¿Tú te lo ganas? Sí. El de las tesis. Ah, sí, sí, sí. ¿Cuál era la, la tesis? Sí. Eh, yo la hago con Raúl. Eh, y, y pero con... ah, ganaste ese premio dos. Dos, ¿no? sí. Ah, claro, yo era claro. el que hacía no, cosas de sí, 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 sí. sistemas sociales y eso. Sí, sí, sí. sí, sí. <risa> ah, ya estás con Raúl ahí. Dile que le metí una puta aquí. Sí. sí. <risa> ¿Qué, qué, qué, ¿Por qué necesitas reversibilidad en el protocolo? Eso es algo que no, no he querido. ¿Y qué es el En el, en el SILAC Engine, ya, el protocolo es reversible. Porque no es una estación eh, libre. Y en el, en el otro protocolo, en el de Lacey, sí, no. el BIT, también ah, has no, hecho hincapié en que el proceso puede ser reversible. Bueno, porque este, digamos, es el mejor de los casos. No, 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 es no, no, Vale, o sea, es, es como es está intentando total. encontrar la disipación mínima. Vale, la disipación mínima se produce cuando es reversible. ¿Y eso tiene? ¿Pero por qué no lo entiendo? Porque si, bueno, esto digamos que sí, no está explicado de todo, pero uh, porque... Uh, bueno, pues sabemos que cuanto que cualquier construcción irreversible disipa. Vale, vale, vale. vale. Entonces, eh, la mínima, el siempre lo óptimo es en el irreversible. Es verdad que eso no está del todo explicado, pero, pero digamos que... 
Sí, sí. Cuando tiene cero versatilidad se crea entropía. Sí. Entonces, sí, dice, sí, sí, sí. Tienes que pagarla. Pero la tiene. Y, y tampoco entendí por, o sea, el, el proceso de Sirar lo entiendo mejor porque es como más físico entiendo la expansión adiabática pero no entiendo por qué dices que el otro puede ser reversible o, el de, perdón el del Eris o de cuando reduces el espacio de 0 a 1 a solo 0 que has dicho que este proceso también puede ser reversible sí, claro la puede ser reversible porque si no disparías más Sí, pues pero ¿qué significa hacer reversible? Es que no, como pues, que no, no lo entiendo. Pues, es que depende de la naturaleza física de la, memo, de la vale. memoria, pero si tú tienes una... No, 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 sé, no, si por ejemplo no, tienes esto, y esta es tu memoria, ¿no? ¿Cómo es el landauer? El landauer es esto es cero y esto es uno. El landauer es hacer así. Pues, digamos, da igual dónde está la partícula, tú la empujas, la empujas a luego vuelves a hacer esto Exacto. esto lo puedes hacer rápido, rápido y de forma que la densidad de probabilidad esté fuera del equilibrio o lo puedes hacer bien Super. y entonces cuando haces eventos cuando disipas el momento ok principalmente gracias Claro, como tu memoria tiene un error, hay veces que bajas el muro y haces el protocolo, si no te das cuenta, y te das cuenta, y eso es realmente lo que te hacen, así que trabajo puro, así que entonces al final lo que obtienes es lo que puedes hacer mediario, o que hacen, y para que yo me intente hacer, y no me doy cuenta de eso, entonces con lo que queda recuperas el caso trivial que es alfa, tiene la 1 y tiene KBT, LN de 2, claro, tienes que tener en cuenta de eso. Y te sale una fórmula que es... Que depende de Epsilon y Alfa. Sí, sí, a mí me sale la de Alfa. Y luego la optimizas. A mí me sale la de Alfa, pero tiene que tener uno, eso, más, menos. Y luego lo claro, que es el Aquí siempre hablamos de promedios respecto a muchos tipos. Y entonces, cuando lo hagas, verás que te sale una fórmula de utilización de Epsilon Alfa. La idea después es cuál es el protocolo optimizado, cuál es el Alfa. Dar un Epsilon, el Alfa que optimiza eso. Sí, sí, yo. Yo había llegado a los me pareció raro porque dije, no, tiene que tener más chicha que esa en casa. No, es fácil, pero tiene... Sí, sí, sí. Oye, hay que hacer, ¿eh? Sí, sí. Hay que hacer, ¿eh? Pero el coffee break no es... El coffee break es algo que... El horario siempre es un poco frustrante. No, no, no. Delta U. Delta U. Delta U, no, sí, no. Delta U, no, sí, no. No, no, no. Delta U, no, no.
Vedem că ori zic plăvera asta.
Ah, no he resuelto esto. <risa> No, el problema es que si no lo uso, no puedo share the screen, ¿no? You're being recorded by this. This is the presentation. Um, the presentation. Because I forget to put the because it was not a coffee break. Because of Python, it was a good idea. So now, now when I'm. One second, let's look the photo. 11:30 or. Ah, yeah, no. Because we already had a coffee break, or there will be another coffee break. I went to. I was looking for that I sent to. The program that I sent to Andre. Andre. Andre is supposed to start at 12. No, 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 no. This is for channels. Andre will start at 11.30. So you must stop at 11.30. But, but this afternoon, you can expand when you want. If you want to finish at uh, 7. Ah, okay, 11.30. Okay. But no, it's 11.30. And then there is no way. Okay. No, yeah, 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 yeah. no, ah, no but, but, but by the way, this afternoon, if you want to expand, you yeah. have all time. Yeah. You can speak all the night. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, no, uh, in, in half an hour, I will try to, to as I said, the, the thematic of information tries to do more uh, systematic, quantitative approach to these problems that we discussed the uh, hour before. So uh, I will give you just the few, few uh, tools to do the exercises for this evening and to understand a bit how we uh, solve these problems. And there, So we have to do, we have to present uh, uh, some concepts and tools from information theory and some from thermodynamics. And uh, maybe this, this is very easy for, or trivial for, or known for many people, but I, here you have it from, from real, from, from scratch. And, um, okay, in information, you know, information theory was, uh, was started by Claude Shannon. He wrote two papers in 1948, so it's not so old, say in 48. They were called Mathematical Theory of Communication. So he didn't uh, use the name Information Theory. He used the name Communication Theory because the theory was intended first to analyze communication. He was in Bell Labs. Well, in Bell Labs, they had everything. They, they, they did everything, but well, uh, he was working on, on communication problems. So uh, um, the, the first uh, concept that he defined in these papers is the, what it is called 
uh, Shannon uncertainty or Shannon entropy, which is uh, something that is defined for any random variable. You have a random variable. I will use rho and x, but, but I will assume that they, these are discrete uh, random variables. So this sum runs over a discrete set of numbers. And, um, and roll of row, I think many of, well, this is, this must be familiar for any, everybody. And this is called uh, Shannon uh, entropy. We were talking this story that uh, why Shannon called this entropy. And it should be called uncertainty or ignorance, actually. But uh, Shannon tells that uh, he asked von Neumann how to call this, this object. And von Neumann said, no, you have to call it entropy. First, because already gives use this formula for entropy. And second, because nobody understands what is entropy. So you will, you will be safe in any discussion. So, uh, but then, then Shannon said that it is not true, that he made up this, uh, he invented this story. This is strange. Nobody knows if this is true or not. Anyway. This is, the, this is the definition. Uh, in, in computer science and so on, uh, here the log um, could be log, natural log, or could be also a log in base two. In computer science, they use log in base two. And then, uh, although this is dimensionless, the unit that comes out when you use log two is bits. And you use natural logarithms, and it's usually called nuts. You can have one bit is point something nuts, not point something one. But maybe one thing to stress is that you're explaining about the and our TP of two, that log is the natural logarithm. Ah, yeah, yeah, one. sorry. When I, yeah. Uh, before in the Maxwell D, in the CR engine, the, this was natural log. Yeah. Is 0.69? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so one bit is 0.6. That's not more. And uh, because we are going to do physics, you can also multiply, you multiply this by Boltzmann constant, and you use uh, natural logarithms. Then this has units of entropy. Units of entropy are used divided by Kelvin because K, well, energy divided by temperature. Uh, but this, this is dimensionless, so here is the, 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 the dimensions are uh, related with the constant. Energy. Yeah. And this is called gives the entropy or thermodynamic entropy. And you see that the, these two are the same object. Well, here we, in, in, Information theory, this notation is, is usual to express the entropy as a function of, uh, uh, of the random variable. Capital X is the random variable. And you can also have H of rho. And S sometimes is, is expressed in terms of rho. Also, in, uh, so, um, And if X is a, a continuous variable, like in, in, in thermodynamics many times, this is usually a micro, micro state, microscopic state, you can replace this by integral. But it's tricky because when you replace, when X is continuous, rho has dimensions. So the log of a dimension, of a quantity with dimension, has always an additive constant, which is arbitrary. So um, it's, more, it's more tricky. Anyway. We are going to just work with discrete variables and very simple variables. In the exercise, you have only x can be left, right, because it's in, in the CLR engine. So you have to, cal to calculate this in a very, very, very simple way. Uh, OK, uh, something which is, this is interesting. This, this measures the uncertainty or the ignorance of, of, uh, of, of this random variable. And it has a very, it has a very specific uh, uh, interpretation or a very specific uh, in which is when you measure this in bits, this H is the average number of there's no questions necessary to guess X. 
So X is a random variable. Suppose that it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a celebrity. And then Edgar thinks of a celebrity. So I have to, this is a big game. I tell you, it's a man or what a man? Is a European or, or American? Or, uh, so I ask yes, no questions, and he has to answer, you know? And then finally, I figure out So uh, this is the same. The, the entropy is the, the number of yes no questions that, that I need to guess X. Since every yes no question is, is a bit, is, I can call it zero one, it's also the minimum, the minimal number of bits necessary to describe X. And this has to do with compression of files. But, um, H, H tells you how much can you compress. Uh, a file uh, where the for my random variable. Uh, take this into account. This is the Shannon entropy is always the uh, minimum uh, amount of bits that you need to describe something. Okay, okay. Uh, this also is inter uh, becomes more interesting when you consider two variables. And, and this is actually one example is when you when I ask a question or, or when I measure something. So I've got things of the celebrity. I ask the question, and then according to the answer, I update my beliefs or I update my. So the uncertainty decreases, no? And this is measured by the conditional entropy. The conditional entropy is defined like that. Is is well, if the answer is suppose this is a question, or a measurement, or or some way I why is giving why is providing information about X. Could be the answer to a question, the outcome to a measurement, and so on. So, what is the uncertainty ah, if, if, the, if the answer is this one? It's just uncertainty of the conditional probability. No? Because conditional probability is my update. Uh, if, and if I average over all possible outcomes, I get what is called the conditional probability. And the conditional probability is this. The conditional probability is the, the average uncertainty of X after asking, or after I get Y as information for X. Is, 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 is how the, the, the new uncertainty. So what it is important is how much reduction of uncertainty a question uh, induces in a barrel environment. And this is called mutual information. Actually, this is information. In some, in some books, you, you see that this is called information. Or Shannon information. This is not. This is not information. This is uncertain. This is significant. And what it is information is this one. Oops. What it is information is this one. Why? Because this is the information that why this is the uncertainty of X before I ask the question. This is the uncertainty of X after the the after Edgar. Uh, uh, Answer the question. Can I do a little bricks? So you... this is the sorry. So, so the mutual information is the reduction of uncertainty or the reduction of ignorance. Remember that I give you an analysis at the end of my uh, your paradox. Yeah. So it was exactly this. Why was the preventer uh, information? X was the initial uncertainty of the door. Mm -hmm. So the answer that you must to do is exactly this, this, this calculation of this mutual information between where is the Ferrari and what the door open the counter. You so you can do this tonight by, by doing the exercise of one, you can do it the same time the exercise again. Okay, so this is the information that the, the, the measurement or the question or whatever is why provides about X. And it measures the reduction of uncertainty. It has very uh, important properties. Well, this is, you put the formulas and, and you get this, this formula for the mutual information, which is completely symmetric for X and Y. So one, one first property, which is not trivial, in some books, they just put it as trivial because they start with this definition. I prefer to start with this definition. I think this is the most uh, basic definition of mutual information. How much the uncertainty, the ignorance is produced by measure something. Okay, so this is symmetric. It's not trivial at the beginning. You see this, this is not symmetric. 
And if you put uh, the, the definitions of uh, all these uh, y and so on, it's a very simple exercise to prove that it is a uh, it is symmetric. Uh, if the two variables are independent, this means that the joint distribution uh, or well, even here in this definition, you remember the conditional probability is is the reduction. Sorry, the, the, the conditional uh, entropy is the entropy condition to y. And if they are independent, the condition x doesn't care about y. So this is it. Or in other words, if if the if 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 Edgar answer my question randomly, <laughs> uh, then uh, the information provided by a random answer is zero. Uh, and, and the last property is that if X is, well, uh, I should show, okay, if X is FY, then, uh, then uh, if, uh, so if, if the answer that determines univocally the uh, X, then uh, this is zero. Huh? We don't have any assessment. Uh, yeah, well, this is, I put this, really this formula like that because, because it is, um, because uh, it is easy to see from here, but it is, it is better to write the formula in this way. If, uh, if Y is a function of X, which is what we say in error-free measurement, or if Edgar is, 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 if Edgar doesn't have any randomness in and, and is, and is, uh, or it doesn't lie, <coughs> no? And the answer, so if, if this is uh, Marie Curie, uh, and I ask, is, is a man or a woman, is, is a woman, not a, not a, not a man. <laughs> then, then if this happens, this is the same as this one, then the mutual information is HY. This is, this, is this, is more, this is more clear than the, than we, well, you can do it, it's symmetric. So you can do it, this is, you can do the other way. But, uh, but this is more clear that if, because this is a, a, a error-free method. Yeah? This is an error-free method. Little f is one to one or not? No. But then if it, little f is not one to one, if you fix the no, y. No, this is not one to one. Ah, this is one to it's one? one to no. Ah, okay, then if you fix the y, you have still an uncertainty of x. No, if you fix y, you have, yeah, there are many. Any possibility x. So, so, I, so, and you see, I don't understand why it becomes zero. In this case, where f is not one to one. Uh, no, in this case, what comes, what happens is that h. Y. No, it's, ah, it's the same. You write it like that. Which one? No, it's okay. And this is zero. The important remark is that it's h of y, not h of x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to swap the two variables for I, I don't see the h one. Uh, this is the same to say that when you when you uh, when, when there is an error of measurement or when the the answer to the question is so when Edgar doesn't lie, the information provided by the by the question is just the entropy of the question. This is why also some people uh, there is this mi mistake mistakes the shared entropy for information because the information provided by a question or by a measurement is the entropy of the shadow of the other. But this is only for error free measurement. Okay. But in the in the slide is like the opposite, no? Uh, the case in which Jenka always lies. No? This case, this case. Yeah. No, this case is when the when because the answer to the question uh, determines the celebrity. This is a bit strange. Why do you don't have information? I wrote. I should have it. I should have written this, okay. but but because there was this formula and this formula was easy here to prove. From this formula, it's easy to derive this and not that. But it is it, it, it is the same because you can exchange it's it's one by like x. Okay. So this afternoon you have to calculate this for the Silar engine with errors, the mutual information. This mutual information is used also. In, 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 in communication theory, actually, um, when, when you have a, a, a communication channel, so this is the message in your phone 
And this is a message in the centralita, I don't know, in the center, in the in the antenna, in the call center. So uh, this tells you how your message searches are distorted by I don't know, by noise in the electrical radiation. Okay, so this is a uh, this is uh, mutual information. I, I want you to remember these three formulas because they are important. This is what the most important one is this one. How much the uncertainty of something is reduced when I measure, and this is going to be the key to express the second law when you have a measurement, which is the case of the CRN. In the CRN, you have a measurement. So when you measure the uncertainty, the entropy, which is going to be the, the, the thermodynamic entropy, the entropy of a system decreases. How much? So we see that the entropy of a in, 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 in a measurement will decrease by five. And this is also very important. This comes from the fact that rho x, log rho x is, 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 the, is the general entropy of x. Rho y, log rho y, you, you, you expand this log and you get x, y, and, and ah, it should be y. And this is also very important when we consider the second task of the bank of information, which is to consider the, the physical nature of the demo. So this will be the system and this will be the demo. And the mutual information will be the correlation between the two. Okay, this yeah, we will see this tomorrow. The uh, H of X and I and Y is like the entropy of the joint. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, this is all that you have to know of uh, information theory. What, what, what that you have to know. There are more things like relative entropy. You have a lecture next week on information theory. Ah, in information theory. So you will have more, you can express this as a relative entropy between two, but there are many, many things. But, uh, but these two slides, no, uh, summarize, especially this. I think we, if, you, if you just, um, Write down this is enough for what we are going to say. And today we are going to use just this one. So remember how the uh, entropy of something reduces when uh, we measure something. And this is going to be the key. In the case of the in the case of the CR engine, we have the particle can occupy the, the, two, the two sides of the box. And we, so this, this has some uncertainty, the, 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 the position has some uncertainty. Don't remember, you have the piston, you put the piston here, and the particle come here or here, you don't know. And when you measure, you uh, know that it is on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is x, x, y, and x. Sorry, this is a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yes. But to minus or plus. Minus. Ah, this is a plus. I did this uh, after some. <laughs> I said, what is this? This drink. Like it. Eh? Rakia. 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 <laughs> I wrote this after some Rakia. <laughs> uh, I will cor correct it. So it's, it's, it's uh, H. It's a. Uh, I 
social interaction because this is, you remember that H is the number of bits I need to describe X, no? So this is the number of bits I need to describe X. This is the number of bits that I need to describe Y. So this is the number of bits that I need to describe X and Y without taking into account correlation. And this is, if I describe both at the same time, so this is, I is the number of bits I save if I take into account correlation. The last formula, the last one is the H of X is Y. Yeah, there's two mistakes. There is a plus here and a Y here. That, that is the, the correct one. There's another question. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, just very quickly. Uh, if X and Y are independent, what should uh, the condition of entropy look like? The condition is just, uh, uh, the just there. Hx is hxy is equal to hx. This is why they cancel. Okay, you just it. When they are independent. Yeah. I know it's different to me, but when you said that x was a function of y, then you need to multiply to the function in order to. In order to. No, well, when x is a function of y. Yeah. You, the formula is this one. You don't need to know the f. No, it's a, it's a question of probability theory. You don't know. You need. You need. You doesn't need. You don't need to know the, the function. It's how it's reduced. Okay, this is a. Well, this is a good question. I think that you need to know the. I think you don't know. You don't need to. Because the value of the, the random variable, which has like the f, uh, is completely determined by the distribution of the argument of the function. Yeah, but in the game, in the, the game, it's true that you need to know. Yeah. In the game? Um, I mean, in the game of yes, no questions, you need to know that, uh, uh, Marie, that uh, one, that who is the woman? Yeah, but is taking averages, when you take averages uh, of a random variable who's a function of another random variable, you don't need the, you only need the distribution of the first variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, I mean, mathematically, the reduction is, is, is there, but, but yeah, to, um, no, but this, yeah, you need to know the function. For instance, in the C line, for instance, this afternoon we will see something which is different. That if you have this, if you have an error in your measurement, uh, of course the, the the amount of work that you can extract is this. And if the probability of error is one, so it's you are completely <laughs> you, you would think it's left when you are right. But mathematically, what you obtain is that you can extract the field of two. Why? Because a, a, a completely error function, mm -hmm. error measurement is a, is a, is a <laughs> if you know that it is, <laughs> if you know that it is like that. So it is a, I think to, it's true mathematically, you don't need the function because the, the, it's a probability calculation. But to implement uh, protocols in thermodynamics or to yeah, solve the game of yes no questions, you really need the when you look for trajectories, for example, it may be important. Yeah, I think you need the function for trajectories. That's a good point. Okay, so I'm going to finish. Uh, so, um, to uh, uh, these are the basic concepts of, of uh, information theory. Now we have some basic concepts of thermodynamics. Okay. And this concept is work, we have to use some of them, work, heat, free. Work, heat, and things like that. But this afternoon, I will explain this. So this afternoon, the plan is in, in half an hour or so, I will tell you the basic concepts of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. And then uh, we will do the exercise together. Okay. So that's it. Ah, questions. The online people has any question? There is a. Please mute your microphone. That's me. <laughs> so no questions.
Okay, great. So, um, see you then this afternoon. This is your computer? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, yes. It, uh, so, uh, <laughs> stop, stop recording. Ah, no, I do. No, 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 it's okay. barcode. No, 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 it's barcode. So I can switch off my computer. Yeah.